Welcome to Las Vegas and CES 2013. It's a short collection of videos highlighting one of some of the things that we think are best of show with regards to interest and trends that are going on in the industry right now. This is the Xperia Z. It's the biggest flagship smartphone launch here at CES. It's won Sony a lot of rewards and it has a five-inch screen which we think is going to be a real trend for smartphones in 2013. All of the big players will have this. Beautifully designed, same footprint as the Galaxy S3. Very thin, nice buttons, glass back as you can see, but also playing to the whole Sony story of everything being connected. So here's the Sony TV. If you want to connect the phone to the TV, you don't have to touch the phone on the TV. All you do is you just hold the TV remote on the back of the um, device and that has NFC and that should connect onto the phone as you can see now and in a minute we will see the and we'll see the actual scene screen of the phone you can see it there we can tip it around or we can even go into an album look at a picture there's a dog zoom in zoom out um, and lots of other things too. You can go in, you can look at uh, videos, etc, etc. So, strong product from Sony, setting the agenda for 2013. And I think we're going to see a lot of phones in this category. The Samsung booth of the show, its size and scale is phenomenal. It really reflects how Samsung is dominating the consumer electronics business right now. Leading in smartphones, leading in TVs, lots of touch points for consumers, and it really is overwhelming. It took them over a month to build this stand. The investment is absolutely incredible. The show that they put on with moving TVs, music, all the consumer electronics products, uh, massive TVs up to 110 inches, um, and this big central display of moving television. A really exciting demo, interactive advertising. So you've got your phone, you've got your TV, and as you're watching a commercial on the TV, just shake your phone, the phone listens to the music on the soundtrack for the commercial, like Shazam, do music recognition, goes off, gets information about the uh, advertisement and the product that's being shown on the show, and up it comes. So here, for example, airport information, and from here you can then tap on the phone, book your vacation, and off you go has been connected home and of all of the players LG, Samsung, Sony and others we really feel that LG have the most put together story so here we are with an, an appliance uh, uh, an oven and, a, and a, an Android phone and what they have here is the ability to choose a recipe which you can configure on here and then you just once you selected the recipe tap the cooker that then warms up the cooker to the right temperature tells you when it's ready on the phone and then you can just maximize the time that you've got now this application they have on the phone here, this actually plugs into all the different appliances they have. So it will connect to the smart fridge, it will connect to the washing machine, connect to the cooker. So LG's vision for the future is that domestic appliances like this become much more intelligent and the phone becomes the remote control for all of them. Here we are on the Huawei stand and this show represents a massive investment for these guys. The story of this show is do not underestimate the Chinese manufacturers. These guys have been having a tough time, particularly here in the US, but they've announced two new products here. This is the biggest of the two products, and this is the Huawei Ascend Mate, which is a phone with a 6.1 screen. It's what they call the Fablet. Um, some interesting things, just one thing I draw your attention to, in the messaging, they have this ability because it's a big device. If you were left-handed, you can have the keyboard this side. If you were right-handed, you have the keyboard this side, so you have the ability to flip it. I just want to show you something on this phone as well. So the way that they're doing the messaging here is with a full screen keyboard. But a nice innovation. You can type here and you can get the letters that you want. But if you want to get the numbers, rather than pressing and holding, all you do is you just swipe your finger down. So they're on the Y. I'm getting a 6 appearing as well. And the Y. Just a nice little bit of UI that they've done. This is the Huawei W1. It's Huawei's first entry into the Windows Phone 8 uh, space. And uh, this is the product that's going to compete with Nokia. Here you can see the Windows Phone 8 interface. It's a nicely put together device. Um, they've gone with the, the color palettes that Nokia have been very successful with as well. So they've got it in this 
bright blue, they've got a, a, a red color as well. Um, it has the Windows Phone uh, 8 capability and a 4 inch screen and we would expect it to be extremely aggressively priced. The TCL stand, another one of the big Chinese manufacturers. And the product you see here is the Alcatel One Touch Idle. Um, this is a real surprise to the show. Android phone but super, super thin. 6.4 millimeters thin this product and this really is a new direction for Alcatel and shows why we should not underestimate the Chinese manufacturers. In addition to announcing this product, they've also announced this product which is their uh, One Touch Scribe which is a 5 inch Android display. So this is moving up into the uh, um, bigger flagship device category rather than this, the cheap low end Android that Alcatel has traditionally played in. We're here on the ZTE stand, or ZTE, uh, and this is the new ZTE Grand S, which is their new flagship Android phone running Android Jelly Bean. It's a five inch screen. Um, again, the Chinese manufacturers making huge progress on the design quality of their products, the CMF, color, materials, and finish. Nice and thin, nice feel to it. And also, I draw your attention to the fact that ZTE have changed their brand. They've quietly done this at this show. Historically, CT always had two Chinese characters after the end of the brand. Now they've dropped that, made it a more kind of anonymous brand from the perspective of where it comes from, and a really nice looking product. This is the Polaroid uh, Android powered uh, camera. It even has uh, interchangeable lenses. You can take them on and off. The reason we think this product is important is it just reinforces the trend that Android has broken out beyond phones and tablets onto other devices as well. We've seen it on cameras here, multiple products like that from Samsung, Nikon and others. Uh, and we're also seeing it uh, in all sorts of other devices, even ovens that have Android in them. The other thing we're seeing at the show is that everybody wants their products to work not only with iOS, but with uh, uh, Android as well. And that's a real step change from last year when everyone was focused on Apple. Panasonic stand, they're taking a slightly different direction with uh, TV. So what they've implemented is a pen that you can use with your TV. So you can just select the color and then you can uh, write uh, on the uh, screen and do all sorts of things. Now what you can also do is the ability to throw a picture off the iPad for example, it comes up on the display, you can then annotate that picture and actually throw it back onto the iPad and, and share it with other people. We actually think this is a great idea to have one of these say in a meeting room or an office where you can do this kind of interactive whiteboarding. I think it's a little bit terrifying if you've got toddlers in your house introducing this concept. I can imagine coming down one morning and there's a black marker pen all over my TV so I think you'd have to be careful where you put this thing. Qualcomm booth and this uses a technology called Gimbal. Basically this is making your phone location aware and in conjunction with the forthcoming Star Trek movie that comes out in May, Qualcomm's been working with Paramount to create an app which has all sorts of location aware and sensing features. So here for example, if I press this button here, yeah. it listens to the commercial here, it'll pick up the music, it's quite a noisy environment, and if it registers it, as a user you get points for registering that particular information and then you'll get uh, more access to more content uh, in the future. So that's one. Then another uh, element of this app is actually the fact that if you're out and about and you actually see one of the posters, again you can just wave the camera in front of the poster, it will register, you get more points. And also it's location aware, so if you go to the cinema, you go watch the film, or you go past the cinema that's showing the film, that will get registered on the app. The killer function is of course that Paramount then get all of that information back into their database so they know your demographic information, they know where you live, they know all the stuff in terms of how much the consumer engagement is with their film. This is the Arcos Gamepad and this really reflects a trend we've seen here at CES of tablets that are designed for gaming. So here you can see it's an Android device, uh, it supports Android ice cream sandwich and jelly bean games and the Arcos guys tell me they work pretty well with this configuration. Dedicated buttons and on top of that price point of apparently $170 in retail. The other product they have here is this uh, Transformer 
tablet product. So you've got a tablet here, uh, I think it's about a, an 8 inch product, uh, which they have, and then it has it, this base with it. It's a bit quirky, but it's kind of clever. You have this fold down plastic piece here, which is magnetic. You fold it up, you drop the thing into it here, and you can see it holds on, it's a magnetic piece. Uh, you've got the ability to then type on it, and then if you want to stow it away, you just stick that on, it's a magnetic frame, and that's the way you transport the tablet. The show has been tablets for kids. This is the Fuhu Nabi. This is a small, uh, I think, five inch uh, display, which is a $99 device using NVIDIA's Tegra processor. This is another one that they've announced, which is the uh, Fuhu Nabi XD, which is a 10 inch tablet, which again is orientated towards kids, comes with a big pack of 200 applications for kids that are accessible and is proving quite a popular concept. So, this is. Um the Skytex 4-inch Android tablet and I think this just shows how far Android has come. This product is a $79 4-inch tablet, it's Wi-Fi, it's going to have dual camera, capacitive screen um, and, and you can just buy it off the web. And I see this as a really interesting form factor, particularly for younger kids. They want to have a phone, you don't want to give them a phone, but they can get this, they can get all of the Android apps on it, and it's a really lovely little pocketable, low-cost um, Android solution. Another big theme to emerge at the show has been wireless charging, and there's a big booth here. This is for the Qi standard, which is the standard that's being used in the Nokia uh, Lumia 920, also the latest uh, HTC ATEX, which uh, is for Verizon. Um, and so you can see here, this is the uh, Lumia 920, uh, which has the wireless charging. All you have to do with this device is actually just put it onto the charging pad, and then it starts charging. You can see it light up. However, if you have a phone that doesn't have wireless charging, you have a new option now. So you can get one of these dongles. Code ring. Code ring, there we go. And you can, and you can actually put that on the end of your phone, put it onto the charging pad, here you can see it's going to light up and bang, the phone's charging. Innovation from Sharp is the Ixo display. It's a next generation display. And what the, the, the killer feature on this is, is the fact that unlike other screens, when the screen is static, it's not refreshing all the time. So it has absolutely incredible battery life. The screen on mobile phones is the biggest drain on the battery. So Sharp can really deliver on what they're talking about here. It could be quite a breakthrough in the battery life on mobile phones. This is the ViewSonic 22-inch um, monitor that they have here. And this is a, basically a smart display. It's full Android, as you can see here. Um, you can mirror stuff onto this, so you can connect it to a PC as well. But it's got Android built in. It's got lots of extensibility in the back with HDMI and other things. But what is so amazing about this, it's just like a giant tablet, is the fact that this product is $499. It's unbelievable that we're seeing technology like this at this price. This is the amazing Tactus Morphing keyboard shown on an Android tablet. 3D printing was an emerging trend at the show. This is an example of a device that cost more than $2,000, but we also saw a product at the show that was around $900, and we think this shows that this technology will soon be well within the reach of consumers.